Good evening, St. John's Lutheran Church, Colbert's in Nebraska. How are you doing this evening? Warm and cordial welcome all together this evening as we celebrate our Christmas Eve service. We should have received a worship bulletin upon entering into the sanctuary. We will follow it as it is printed. Inside also there is a half-page insert, and it tells us that the opening hymn will be hymn 307, Joy of the World. Psalm 8 is Psalm 110, and verses 1 through 4. The sermon hymn is 379, O Come All the Faithful. The closing hymn is in 363, Silent Night, Holy Night. I now invite you to open up your hymnals to the opening hymn, 387, and let's begin by singing Joy to the World. Your 
Son, Jesus Christ, and have mercy on me. Forgive me, renew me, and lead me, so that may be life in your will, and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As they call that our name serves the word, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh Lord, open thou my lips. Make haste to God to deliver me. Of 
Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be a child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. O Lord, have mercy upon us. The mystery and point of growth seem to be important for us in the third chapter, the fourth chapter of the epistle of 1 John, starting with the seventh verse. Let us love one another. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world, that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. We know that we live in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him, and he in God. And so we know and rely on the love that God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God is him. O Lord, have mercy upon us. The Holy Gospel has the force to see these reported for us in the first chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew, starting with the 18th verse. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said to the prophet. The virgin will be with child and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us.
judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. Amen. Let us continue by singing the sermon hymn, number 379.
resume. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said to the prophet. The virgin will be with child and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. This is the gospel of the Lord. So consider these words penned by St. Matthew, the blessed apostle of the inspirational spirit. Remind the theme of this invitation is, God says, do not be afraid. Because of Emmanuel, God is with you. This brings us to the gospel lesson this evening. In the gospel lesson this evening, we find Joseph and Mary. And they are considered as being righteous because they both believed in the promise that one day God would send a Savior to save them from their sins. And they loved each other. They were engaged. Mary loved Joseph, and Joseph loved Mary. And they are both looking forward to getting married, and having children, and raising a family, and living happily ever after. But then plans changed. God stepped in. And now God sent his holy messenger, Gabriel, to visit Mary in Nazareth. He spoke and Mary listened. And the angel said to Mary, Mary, do not fear. Do not be afraid. Because you are the favored one. You are the one that God has chosen to be the very mother of the Son of God, the Savior of the world, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. And Mary was perplexed happy words. So she responded to the angel Gabriel by saying, what? How can this be? This is impossible because I have never been with a man. And the angel Gabriel replied, who is speaking and hearing the word shall be overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. And conception will take place, and you will give birth to a son, and you will give him the name Jesus, which means the Lord now saves. Nothing is impossible for us. Consider your cousin Elizabeth. Oh, she was always called barren, and yet now in her old age, she is now conceived, and will give birth to a son, and she is six months old. So now Mary replied by faith. Faith is created by the word of God. St. Paul tells us faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And faith is always a good thing, a divine thing, a positive thing. Faith always agrees with God's word. Faith always follows God's word. Faith always trusts in God's word. Faith never argues with God's word. Faith never debates with God's word. Faith never doubts God's word. And so Mary answered by faith. I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be. Let it be, thee, let it be done unto me according to the very word of God. And it was so. But now Mary had to tell Joseph. When Mary told Joseph, Joseph was hurt big time. And man, he went ballistics. And he was filled with all sorts of doubts and all sorts of fears. Oh, you know that marriage thing with Mary? You can throw that away, that's out the window. Oh, remember having kids in a family with Mary? Oh, you can throw that away. That's out the window. Plans change because life happened. And the Lord had stepped in. So now Joseph thought about what he would do. And he decided the best thing he could do, because he's a righteous guy, he had faith, and because in the midst of all this, Joseph still loved Mary. And in the midst of all this, Joseph 
contrary to her cousin Elizabeth. Get her out of Nazareth. Get her out of my face. Get her out of my mind. Get her out of my life. Just get her away. And then there's Mary. Joseph told Mary what he was going to do. And you can bet at this time that Mary was filled with all sorts of doubts and all sorts of fears. Now what am I going to do? Here I am, pregnant, going to give birth to a son, and the man that I love wants nothing to do with me and wants to send me away. And here I am, a teenager, pregnant, and now I'm going to have to be a single mom and raise this boy all by myself. You can bet Mary was filled with all sorts of doubts and all sorts of fears. And yet echoing around in her brain were the words of the Lord. Mary, do not fear. Do not be afraid. Because God is with you. Amen. Almost especially according to his words and promises. Mary, do not fear. Do not be afraid. Because God promises all things to work together for your good. Mary, do not fear and do not be afraid. Because everything's going to be just fine. Everything's going to be okay. And it was. But then there was Joseph. Joseph who was hurt. Joseph who was mad. And now Joseph who was filled with doubts and fears. Never getting married to Mary? Well, that's out the window. Never having children and raising a family with Mary and living happily ever after? Well, that's out the window. Plans have changed big time. And now Joseph had decided we're just going to put Mary away quietly. Send her to the hill country to her cousin Elizabeth and get her out of Nazareth. What? Plans changed. Life happened. God stepped in again. Now he appeared to Joseph in a dream. And he did so in the form of a divine messenger, an angel. And the angel said to Joseph, Joseph, son of David, do not fear. Do not be afraid. Take Mary home as your wife. Because what she told you is the truth. She has been overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. Conception has taken place. And she will give birth to a son. And by the way, Joseph, you're going to be the father of that one. Because you're going to give the name, that one, the name of Jesus. Which means, the Lord now saves. Change of plans. Take time. And Joseph was a man of faith. Honor is one of the righteous. Faith never argues with God's word. Faith never doubts God's word. Faith always follows God's word. Faith always trusts God's word. And so now Joseph, by faith, said, I am a servant of the Lord. Let it be. Let it be done unto me according to the word of God. And it was so. And now God spoke to Joseph and said, Joseph, do not fear. Do not be afraid. Because of Emmanuel, God is with you according to his words and his promises. Joseph, everything is going to work together for your good. Joseph, everything is going to be good. Everything is going to be okay. And it was. And now it comes down to you and to me. Joseph and Mary were common to the righteous. They had faith that one day God would send a Savior who would save them from their sins. So too, now you and I are one of the righteous. You and I are one of God's holy people. Now you and I have faith that God did send his son to save us from our sins. And you and I are just like Mary and Joseph. Here we are sailing through life. We have this dream. We have this plan. We have this objective. And we work our tail off to achieve that dream and plan and objective. And all of a sudden, life happens, and it's shot to smithereens and falls apart. God says to you and me, do not fear. Do not be afraid. 
I promise all things are going to work together for your good, and everything's going to be okay, and everything's going to be just fine. So we come up with another plan, another dream, and now we work our tail off to achieve that plan and that dream. And all of a sudden, life happens, and it's, it's shot to smithereens and falls apart. God says to you and me, do not fear. Do not be afraid. I promise all things are going to work together for your good. Everything's going to be okay, and everything's going to be all right. So we come up with a new dream, and we come up with a new plan. But now everything is best of big time. Upside down, inside out, and totally desperate. We look at the Lord and we say, Lord, I can't see anything good coming from this thing. Lord, I can't see any way that this is going to be a good thing. You and I are just like Mary and Joseph also in this way. St. Paul tells us that we are sinners and saints. We are saints because we have faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior and Redeemer. But we are sinners because we all have original sin. Because we have original sin, doubts and fears exist alongside faith and trust. When doubts and fears increase, faith and trust decreases. When doubts and fears rule, then you and I are no longer putting our faith and trust in our God, His words, His promises. Me? And every one of you, we have original sin, the old Adam. Me and every one of you, we all fall short. You've got your doubts and fears, I've got my doubts and fears. So we look to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and we go back to the promise of Isaiah, the old Adam lesson for today. And this is the sign, a virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and he shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. And he is Emmanuel, God with us, the one who bears the name Jesus, the Lord now saves, the one who is conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, to save you and to save me, the one who lived a perfect life, died upon the cross, and rose again on the third day, conquer all of sin with all of his righteousness, Conquer all of Satan, all of love, and all of death and resurrection in life. So you and I can have life and forgiveness and salvation. So you and I can now be God's holy people. So now God can come to you and me and say, Do not fear. Do not be afraid. Especially concerning all things spiritual. All things go together for your good. Everything is okay. Everything is all right, even for all of eternity. As you go to the Epistle lesson this evening, we find St. John the Apostle. St. John the Apostle reminds us that our God is love, agape love, unconditional love. No prerequisites, no conditions, no strings attached. The Apostle John goes on to tell us that God has shown us his love in this way. It was God the Father, Lord of love, who sacrificed his son in your place and my place as his other children, so you and I can have forgiveness and life and salvation. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has that same agape, unconditional love, as he tells us in the Gospels. No greater love does one have for another than they lay down their life for them so they can be saved. That's what my Jesus did for me. And in the midst of all this, keep in mind that the fallen and broken world in which you and I live also has its own kind of love. And in the fallen and broken world, that love operates according to a barter system. You say this good thing about me, and I will say this good thing about you, and what do you say will call it love? You do this good thing for me, and I will do this good thing for you, and what do you say we'll call it love. That kind of love of the fallen and broken world always has a cost and always has a price. And you had better pay the cost. You had better pay the price or too bad, no love for you. And the problem with that is sometimes the cost cannot be paid and the price cannot be paid. Most especially with us toward our God. 
not merit his love. His love is freely given and freely received, or it would not be love. What it means for you and me as God's holy people is this. You and I don't got to worry about saying enough good things to be good enough to be loved by God. You and I don't have to worry about doing enough good things to be good enough to be loved by God. You and I don't have to worry about being good enough to be loved by God. That good enough stuff doesn't even enter into the equation when it comes to God, because God is love. And God knows everything. He knows everything about me. He knows everything about you. Every thought, every word, every deed, all our strengths, all of our weaknesses, all of our goods, all of our bads, all of our everything in betweens. He knows it all. You can fool your friends, you can fool the world, you can fool society, but you cannot fool God. God can look into our heart and soul and know what's going on. God knows everything. And God knowing everything about me and everything about you, he promises to remain by our side and totally, completely, unconditionally while me and you for who and what we are, and he always will. And keep in mind that when it comes to love, in love, there is no doubt, and there are no fears. In love, there's only faith and trust. And that's the, God, that's the love that God has for you and for me. And so tonight, the Lord comes to you and me and says, do not fear. Do not be afraid. Because of Emmanuel, God is with you according to his agape, unconditional love. Always will be. In the gospel lesson this evening, we find family. We find Joseph. We find Mary. We find baby Jesus. Family has always been important to God, and it always will be. And now it comes back to you and to me. This Christmas Eve and tomorrow on Christmas Day, you and I are going to celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ being conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of Mary in Bethlehem to be our Savior. Just take one step back and look at who is with you. More than likely, it's going to be your family, those you know the best, those you love the best. You are a gift of love to them, and they are a gift of love to you. And as you give those presents and open up all those presents, and receive those presents and open up all those presents, Remember, they all point to the greatest present of all. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem, to be our Savior. And the other present that God leaves you this evening is a very special message, and a very important message, and a very short message. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. Because of will be many. God is with you. And tonight he says to you, all things shall be together for your good. Everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be okay. Today, tomorrow, and before, all of eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. And now the peace of God, which passed all human understanding, made a blessed faith to life everlasting. Amen. And now let us have the other.
magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. I mean, all from this day, all generations will call me blessed. He has put down the mighty from their seats and exalted the humble and the meek. He has remembered his mercy and sustained his servant Israel as he promised to our fathers Abraham and his seed forever.
in the narthex this evening. They did a great job. Good job. Awesome job. Okay? Also, we have candy sacks this evening as you were leaving. Whether you are a big kid or you're a little kid, make sure that you get a candy sack. And we have lots of them. So, Lord, blessings. May you all have a blessed Christmas Eve and a blessed Christmas Day. Keep an eye on the weather. Both the